Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software and on today's video, Audio Sync for Beginners, we're going to go over how to set up and play back a single channel of audio. To set up recording in Eclipse, you want to first access your user settings. You can click on the settings icon, go to production user settings, or press Alt U to access your user settings. Once in the user settings, go to real time tab, click on audio recording. After choosing audio recording, we're brought to the wave audio recording window. This is where all of your audio channels and recording quality settings are selected. At the top of this window is the auto pause setting. Eclipse is capable of automatically pausing your recording during a job if you stop writing or stop using your voice input device. Whatever number this is set to represents the number of minutes that Eclipse will wait to begin the pause. So if I have this number set to 1 and I stop writing on my steno machine for 1 minute, Eclipse will pause the audio recording. If I have this set to 5, Eclipse will wait 5 minutes for no steno or voice steno input until it will pause the audio. This can save hard drive space during breaks and lunches, however using it is a personal choice. If you do use auto pause, ensure that you also have auto restart next to it checked. Auto restart will make sure that if your audio recording is paused, that it starts again when you start writing again either on your steno machine or with your voice writing input device. Next in the window is the Add Channel button. This allows you to add additional channels of audio to your settings. However, in this video, we're just going to use the single default channel zero. Next to the Add Channel are the up and down arrows, and these allow you to move your channels up and down if you have more than one channel. And next is the Delete Channel button. Since there's currently only channel zero, a single channel of audio, Delete Channel is grayed out and not available. You're always going to have at least one channel of audio here. Next in the window is the audio device selector. This is where you can choose what audio device the selected channel is going to use. In this instance, I have three devices to choose from, default, my headset, and a plug-in device. We'll look at the devices more in just a moment. Next in this window is input. We're not going to use input in this example. For most regular recording and recording devices, the input selector can be left at one. If you're using mixers or multi-channel devices, you may need to set the input to something else. However, for basic recording, input one is fine. Next is the compression button, and this is what allows you to select your audio quality settings and size settings for your recording. Last is the levels button. Pressing levels brings me into the Windows audio settings. In this window, I can go to the recording tab, and here I see all of my audio devices. Currently, the device that has the green check mark is my headset. However, I don't want to use my headset to record my room audio. I want to use this USB microphone that I have plugged in instead. So the microphone USB PNP audio device is the microphone that I'm going to use. And I want to make sure that this microphone is turned up and ready to use. So I can right click and go to properties. Next, I'll go to Levels. My microphone volume level is set at 100%. For my microphone, that works well. You may find that your microphone needs to be a little bit lower depending on the mic. To the right of the microphone volume percentage is the speaker icon. If I click on this, the red circle indicated that while that was there, the microphone was muted. So if I click on the blue speaker icon again, you see that again I got the red circle. If you see that red circle you want to click on the blue speaker icon to get rid of it because that red circle does mean your microphone is muted and won't be able to hear anything. So now that I've made sure that my microphone is turned up and not muted I can press OK and I'll just make note of the device name again. It's microphone USB PNP audio device and I see that to the right here my green bars are bouncing and so I'm ready to go. I'll press OK and back in Eclipse, I can go ahead and select my audio device for my channel. Since my Windows default audio device is my headset, I don't want to leave this set as default. I want to go ahead and choose my actual device. I'm going to click this drop down list and I'll choose the microphone USB PNP audio device. 
Next, I can choose my compression settings. If I click compression, the first option that I'm giving, given is the format option. This is going to be the basic format that your audio file is recorded in. These are the default recording codecs that come with Windows, and most of these should work on any computer that you send this WAV file to. PCM and GSM are the most common settings. I'm going to go ahead and select GSM. This is the setting that you would want to use if you're using Connection Magic with a Scopist. This produces a nice compact small audio file that you can use and send easily over Connection Magic. If you're not concerned about the size of the WAV files, you can choose PCM instead. If you do choose PCM, just make sure that in the Attributes section, you choose one of the 16-bit options instead of 8-bit. However, for this example, I'm going to go ahead and choose GSM 6.10, and I'm going to go ahead and select the 22.050 kilohertz, um, and that is the recommended setting for Connection Magic in Eclipse. I'll press OK, and you see that now my channel 0 shows that it has my USB PNP audio device, and that now it's set to GSM 6.10, and it's the same 15 megabytes per hour. All of this is correct. I don't need to make any further changes to the quality or settings of my audio devices or audio files, so I can press OK. The next step to audio recording is to turn recording on. To ensure that automatic recording is turned on, you can go to Production, and then Translate, or you can press Alt-T. In the Alt-T window, there are four translation modes available. Tran and Edit and Quick Tran allow you to translate notes that you've read in from your Steno machine. Virtual Real Time allows you to retranslate an existing file as if you were doing it in real time. This is helpful sometimes for troubleshooting or learning how to use things like Connection Magic. However, if you're going to do a new job and you want to record audio, you'll notice that with Virtual Real Time, Quick Tran, and Tran and Edit, record audio is grayed out and not available. So only when you're doing real time can you record audio. If you read your notes in and your writer records audio, that audio will come in automatically. And when you translate using Tran and Edit or Quick Tran, the audio will be available. However, when you're doing real time, you want to choose real time and then choose record audio. After record audio is checked, you can uh, press OK to start the real time file. It'll prompt you to specify the name of the file, press OK, and you can type in anything you'd like. I'm going to call my file audio test. Once I'm in the real time file, you'll notice that there are two places where I can see that my audio is recording. In the bottom left of the info bar, there's a waveform display graph that shows my voice every time I speak and you'll see any voices that your microphone can hear in this display. Also, additionally, I currently have the real-time status box shown, and you'll see that where, when I speak, the audio one bar also bounces, indicating that it's able to hear me. If you don't have your real-time status box up, you can access it by going to Window, View, and View Real-Time Status. If your real-time status box does appear but doesn't have the audio one line in it, you can right-click at the top where it says status and put a check mark in audio one. So that's two ways that you can monitor your audio recording during your job. Whichever you prefer is fine. In this example file, I'm going to go ahead and write a little bit while I talk. And after I'm done writing, I'm going to stop the translation and show you how to play the audio back. You'll notice that although I haven't written anything yet, and although I've given no command to record, the audio file is already recording. Since I had the record audio checkbox checked in the translate notes window, the audio recording automatically started and I don't have to do anything but start real time and start writing. So I'm going to go ahead and start writing now. In this file, I will speak and write to demonstrate how AudioSync works in Eclipse. And I'm just going to do this short example. 
You can play audio back while you're in real time, but since this is a short file, I'm going to go ahead and go to production and stop translation to stop the translation. And now I can play it back. You can access all of your playback commands in Eclipse by going to Tools, Multimedia, and this is where all of the commands are listed. If you're in standard keys, the commands next to the controls will be listed in the standard format. If you're in hyper keys, however, the keystroke next to the commands will be listed as the hyper key. And here we see that play is listed as Alt J. And so the way that play works in Eclipse, you can put your cursor on a word and hit play, and it will play the audio from that time in the wave file syncing to this particular word. So I'm going to go ahead and put my cursor on the phrase in this file, and I'll hit play. In this file, I will speak and write to... And so that's standard default playback in Eclipse. You can press Alt-J again to toggle the audio playback off. You'll see that under Tools, Multimedia, there is also a pause command. Alt-K is the default keystroke for the pause. And you can use Alt-K to pause the playback, but you can also use Alt-J to both start and pause playback. Play in, in Eclipse is a toggle command, and you can use that entirely. In addition to play and pause, there is rewind and fast forward. When you use rewind and fast forward, Eclipse will play audio from either before or ahead of, the, of your cursor in the document. Fast forward and rewind is controlled in your user settings, document tab, under time codes. There is a fast forward rewind second setting, and this is the number of seconds forward and back that rewind and fast forward will move when you use the command. So right now mine is set to 5 seconds, and if I use fast forward, the audio will play 5 seconds in advance of my cursor, and if I use rewind, the audio will play 5 seconds behind my cursor. In addition to play, pause, fast forward, and rewind, under tools, multimedia, there's also a control panel option. In the audio control panel, there are a couple features that we don't really need to worry about in this video since we're going over basic audio. The channel selection, since we only have a single channel of audio, should be set to zero, and auto should not be selected. Move cursor will move your cursor along with the audio as you play it back, and that can be helpful depending on your editing style. The device selection in the top right is where the audio will come from. This allows you to select a different playback device in Eclipse than you have selected in Windows if you desire to do so. That allows you to play your audio from Eclipse through a pair of headphones, but your audio from Facebook or YouTube will still come out of your speakers if you want. At the bottom left there's a Play Levels button, and this opens the Windows Volume Mixer. This shows you the volume that your Windows system is at on the left where it says Speakers or whatever your playback device is, and then it shows you the volume of each of your open programs. At the bottom you can also mute programs, so if under Eclipse you see that the speaker icon has this red circle with a slash through it, you won't be able to hear your audio from Eclipse even though you can hear audio from everywhere else on your computer. Play levels can be helpful if you're trying to troubleshoot audio playback issues that only happen in Eclipse, or if you want to change the volume of just your Eclipse program or just your other programs. In this window, I can make Eclipse quieter than my regular speakers are, and I can make other programs quieter and louder as well. Hitting the play button will play audio, and hitting the stop button will stop audio that you're playing while you're in the audio playback control panel. The Time Codes button will allow you to access the Time Codes window, which is where your fast forward and rewind setting is. And the New Wave file isn't applicable to this example. In the middle are the primary controls that you may adjust when you come in here. First is speed, and this will increase or reduce the speed of the audio playback. 100 is the default setting for this, and that's what it was playing at when I played before. You can increase the playback speed in order to make the audio speed up. So if I hit play right now, I will speak and write to demo. I can then increase the speed and hit play again. In this file, I will speak and write to. 
and you see that the audio is much faster. In addition to changing the speed, you can also adjust the threshold of the audio. Threshold allows you to skip over quiet portions of the audio. If someone is taking pauses to reflect or check their notes, shuffling papers, or otherwise being quiet for an extended period of time, the threshold allows you to skip those instances. The default for threshold is zero, which means no modification. If I hit play right now, in this file, I will speak and write. You see that we still have the speed effect in place, and so the audio is sped up, but there are still the pauses that I took between the words. So what I'm going to do is change the threshold to five, and I'll press play again. In this file, I will speak and write to demonstrate how. And you see that the words are coming much more promptly after one another, and this threshold setting has eliminated the pauses that I was taking between each word. However, this setting can be set too high. For instance, if I set this to 50 and hit play, in the file, I write how I work in. you see that it sounds as though it's skipping over things, and that means that things that are under a certain volume level are being skipped. However, I've set that volume level simply too high. If I go back down to 5 and hit play again, in this file, I will speak and write to the audio is prompt, but not being skipped over. However, if I change this back to 50 again and hit play, in the file, I write how you can see that many syllables are being dropped. And so the default setting for threshold again is zero for no modification, and you generally want to increase this in very small amounts to make sure that you're not skipping over any words. Additionally, in the audio playback control panel, there's a check mark for play on exit. If you have this checked when you press OK, the audio will begin to play. I will speak and write to demonstrate how audio in addition to being able to control the speed and threshold of your file, since Eclipse audio syncs to each stroke to its timecode, you can put your cursor on any word and hit play and be able to hear that word. For example, I'm going to put my cursor on the word audio sync and hit play. How audio sync works in Eclipse. And I see that I dropped the word how here so I can edit it in quickly. With AudioSync, Eclipse gives you excellent tools to ensure accuracy and save time when you are putting out transcripts. If you haven't already turned on AudioSync, I urge you to give it a shot and to contact support if you need any help with it. For basic audio recording setups, that's really as simple as it is. In order to set up your audio settings, you can go to your user settings, real-time tab, and to the audio recording window. To ensure that recording is turned on, you can go to Translate Notes, choose Real Time, make sure that Record Audio is checked. And once you're done with a file, you can play back the audio and control the audio playback by going to Tools and Multimedia. You can find all of the playback controls as well as the control panel for audio listed in the Multimedia window. By using AudioSync in Eclipse by Advantage Software, you can ensure that you're putting your most accurate transcript forward and you can save time while you're doing it. AudioSync is easy to configure. You can record with any device available. Eclipse Audio syncs word by word, stroke by stroke, so you know that wherever you need to go in your document to spot check, you're going to get the audio you need. No searching or time code comparison required. Just put your cursor on the phrase you want to hear and hit play. AudioSync in Eclipse has easy to access controls and is easy to use and easy to remember how to use. Set it up today if you haven't already. If you need help with audio recording or audio playback or any of Eclipse's other great features, Advantage Software offers anytime support 24-7. Technical support can be reached anytime, including weekends and holidays, at 772-288-3266. Email support is also available at support at eclipsecat.com. Please reach out to us if there's anything that we can help you with. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy the content that our channel provides, please subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so that you will be notified whenever new content is published. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.